Hello everybody, this is Lori Anderson, contributor with FreedomOutpost.com, and I felt like in these trying times with Ferguson going on and with the issues going on across this nation, whether it be the criminal uh, executive orders for uh, illegal immigration, or whether it be the unsecured borders where private property owners are being flooded with um, individuals from different countries. Most people don't realize that OTMs are known as other than Mexicans and there is a lot more um, criminal immigrants coming in that are not Mexican than really are the Mexican people. So I felt as an American, I felt as a mother that it is my duty to speak to the ladies out there. You know, our second amendment protects every amendment that we have that are our natural rights. These are not given to us by man. They're not given to us by President Obama. They're not given to us by our corrupt politicians that like to play their games. They know that Americans are waking up and they are starting to get educated and realize that we are born with these rights. We have the right to life, to liberty, and to the pursuit of happiness. And how do we secure that right? We secure that right by being able to protect our families, our neighborhoods, our children, and our country. We do that with the Second Amendment. Now, we are not, and I am not advocating being an aggressor. I am not advocating an overthrow. And I surely am not advocating rioting. As a matter of fact, that is one of the things that has inspired me to do this video. Because people keep going around from one thing to another. They're making this about black versus white or the little people versus the police. So how do we fix that? Well, I'll tell you. An armed citizenry is a polite citizenry. And in order for you to be armed, you need to be responsible enough to know gun safety, how to handle your weapon, and how to protect the people whom you are around. So how do we stop the rioting and the police state at the same time. Well, you have problem reaction solution. The problem is the rioting. The reaction is for the people to call for more help from the police or the Army National Guard, or for that matter, the federal government. So how do we solve that problem? If you have an armed citizenry do you think the rioters are really honestly going to be rioting if you're standing in front of those buildings with those weapons protecting them and protecting your community? No, they won't. They will move on. That was proven in Ferguson three months ago when they thought that they were going to trash a gun store. When the gentleman stood outside with their guns armed and loaded and nobody harmed that store. This is the same thing throughout history. An armed society is a polite society. Research Kennesaw, Georgia. They had terrible crime statistics until they made an ordinance in Kennesaw that made it to where everyone must own a gun unless you're a felon or you stand on religious principles that, or you just simply choose not to have one, but it is in the ordinance. Their crime rate went to zero. Zero for violent crime rate. I'm not talking about your regular crime rate. I'm talking about violent crime. Went to virtually zero for almost 20 years. So, how do we stop the police state? We stop the police state by having an armed society. No, there won't be shootouts in the streets like John Wayne days. 
and there won't be Billy the kids running around like crazy. That's all hype and scare tactics in order to make you think that you must have somebody else control those guns. Well, when you have less crime, you need less police officers. You don't need Army National Guard in there because it is not out of control. Now, I understand that there's a lot going on with Ferguson. I understand that the protesters were trained by the Department of Justice. How nice. We thank you. We wonder if any of our tax dollars went to training these protesters like they did with the Trayvon Martin situation. However, back to the point. The point is, it is not just a man's responsibility to be armed to protect our community. It is not just the police officer's responsibility to protect our community. In reality, it's not even the police officer's responsibility. Supreme Court ruled that. It's not, they are not obligated to protect you. They're not obligated to protect me. So, we who tout the Constitution and who claim we want rule of law, real rule of law, real justice, not these hopped up, pretend situations where they make all sorts of stuff up and then they have a mob rule. And because society says, I don't like the decision of what a jury makes, then well, we're just going to riot. Well, they're not going to riot with an armed citizenry. And that's one of the things that needs to be brought out about this. You have people touting gun control with false statistics. All you have to do is research the history and find out that as the violent crime rate in the United States of America has gone down massively in the last 20 years, gun sales have skyrocketed. So, how do we fix the problem? Education, for one. The Second Amendment, for two. Ladies, it is your responsibility, just as it is my responsibility, to not only arm yourself, but to be well trained. It is your responsibility to make sure that you keep your family safe. It is no one else's responsibility to take care of me to take care of you. And when you have that, the armed citizenry, you don't have the tyranny that you see today. But we keep expanding the police state because buildings are being burned. We keep expanding the police state because the people keep calling for intervention because these individuals are corrupt. What's behind it? Could it be the no hesitation targets that the Department of Homeland Security ordered and was so nice to provide to certain police departments? I don't know. I don't know if that police department ever used no hesitation targets. I do know that all of the American people whether you are black, whether you are white, whether you are Hispanic, whether you are Chinese, whether you are purple, pink, polka dot, it doesn't matter. You're being targeted. And you're being targeted by a system, not by race, and certainly not by the police. They're being targeted as well. This has been reported on for a very long time. Now, I do know that there are some ladies that have children. I'm one of them. That is why I chose the weapon that I chose. So I want to share that with you. But I also want you to know it's extremely important that you know gun safety. You know how to responsibly use it. And you need to make sure if you do decide to own a weapon and you have children, you need to first teach them gun safety. Why? Because then they realize it is not a toy. 
It is not something to play with. It is a protection tool is what it is. It is not for aggression. It is only for self-defense. Now, what I chose was my 45. And I chose my 45 because it has two safety locks. This right here is one of them. This over here has a key lock on it. When this is locked, the slide cannot slide back. You cannot chamber this weapon with this locked. Now, so this has a double safety mechanism. This right here is a Taurus PT-145 Millennium Pro. However, if you're inexperienced in firing weapons, I would not suggest this be your first weapon. It has a strong kick and gives one heck of a hole. Start off with something that you know you can control. This is the size of the bullets. You want to always make sure that if you are carrying your weapon, it's not empty. An empty gun will do you no good. All you can do then is take and beat them over the head with the barrel. It's as useless as tits on a board. I always have one chambered. And I always keep it on me. This specific holster is a very comfortable holster. This is actually, I have it on my side like this so that I can show you, but this is actually a concealed carry holster. This holster is very comfortable. And this right here hooks in the back of your clothing. Hook it solidly on your belt, and there you have it. Put on your jacket. And there you go. You're concealed. Now, in some states, you're allowed to conceal carry without a license. In other states, you are not. My issue, and I used to be very strong supporter of the concealed carry licensing, until they started tracking people down illegally through the registration and through knowing where they were at. So, then I got to really thinking about this concealed carry um, registration and what it means. Okay, so here's my question. Everybody thinks the concealed carry licensing is so great. First of all, it's illegal. It's unconstitutional. Second of all, if you're allowed to carry it openly without having a license, then why would you be required to register, basically, to get a license in order to conceal carry? Law-abiding citizens are not the ones that go around shooting people. There are so many articles and so many stories of law-abiding citizens saving lives of people they don't even know that stand up for the little guy, that stand up for the store clerk that's being robbed, that stand up for the pizza man that's being held at gunpoint over $5 that's in his wallet, 
and that stand up for law enforcement look up the article on Vic Stacy. He saved a police officer's life because of using his weapon. When the police officer was pinned down by a maniac with a gun. So let's be under no illusion. The criminals will always get guns even if they order them from the ATF. You know, Fast and Furious, Operation Gunrunner. They have no problems putting grenades, semi-automatic weapons, probably some automatic weapons as well, which people like you and I can't just readily get a hold of. But they freely make sure that the Mexican drug cartel, the Sonola drug cartel, known for murdering drugs and all sorts of horrible, horrible things, can get their hands on those weapons they're trying to take out of our hands. Many people think that the Second Amendment should be discussed. And you know, that's really not true. You're born with that right. There's no discussion. It's end of discussion. It's over with. Done. Just as much it is your right to breathe. Just as much as it is your right to speak out. Just as much as it is your right to have a search warrant before the police officers come and regularly try to come into your home or into your vehicle. The problem today is that through the education system, people have been brainwashed and don't know. They hear things here and there, but they really don't study. We're not subject to the corporation unless we allow ourselves to be. Ladies, it is not just your right, it is your duty, just like it is my duty, to train, to be armed, and to make sure that our kids, our neighborhoods, our families are safe. Because ultimately, when we do that, our country will be safe. And our country will be safe by the real homeland security, which is we the people, and not this false sense of security from political bureaucrats that want to destroy this nation. I hope I've made some sense. I hope you enjoy this video. If you agree with me, please share it. Thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. Leave your comments in the box below. And remember, they can't take and destroy our country. If we don't let them. The ultimate woman's right is to protect her young, her family, and her country. And I don't need to sign up with a police force to get a $60 badge to do that. God bless, and you have a great day, and I hope you really think about what I've said. Because protecting this nation is what we must do. Our country has been taken over by corrupt political politicians and globalist bankers. They care nothing for you.
whether you are Republican or Democrat, I get so tired of hearing that. It's so funny. And the reason I say that is because it is amazing how many people think they're actually two different parties. They're not. Just like everybody's touting, oh, Rand Paul is so great. Really? He supports the TPP, which does away with the sovereignty of the United States of America. How great is that? He supports an unlawful war, sending troops into Iraq. He supports... All sorts of things, this devil speak, and then he speaks against a couple of little things, and everybody's like, oh, he's such a good guy. He supported the NDAA the first time. Then when they did their alteration, he supported it as well, which allowed for military tribunals instead of a regular court for we the people. He is not your friend, and he is not mine. People tout Rick Perry. Although there are some things I like about Rick Perry, he's just as corrupt. Why do I, why, why would I say that? He supported the NAFTA highway and backdoored it years ago. That does away with the sovereignty of our country. He pretended when this illegal immigration flooding came through our borders that he wasn't going to tolerate it, so he sent 1,000 National Guards to the border. No, he sent 1,000 National Guard to the border to help process the criminal aliens. He has at his disposal over 19,000 National Guard, and you're going to tell me he could only send 1,000, and all they did was help process? And you're cheering him on as if he's some hero? He's playing you for a fool. McCain is playing people for a fool. McCain is a traitor and should be tried for high treason. Walks hand in hand with terrorists. Do you think this stuff in Syria is really about fighting ISIS? Really? When Barack Obama or Barry Satoro, whichever name you want to call him. Let out the leader of ISIS in 2009 released him. Our government has trained ISIS. Our government funds, supports, and arms ISIS. It is an attempt to overthrow a legitimate government in Syria, which is Assad. Now, I'm not saying Assad is a perfect man. Of course, I don't know any of us that are. But I know this. He was not massacring his people. The U.S. government has tried for years to make an excuse to go into Syria to overthrow Assad and put a puppet in, just like they did over in Egypt. And the people are falling for it. Send our troops more into a bloody war, which has nothing to do with America and has everything to do with globalist elite bankers wanting control of the world. Saudi Arabia, in 2009, look it up. Had to do with a natural gas pipeline, Assad would not agree. He got threatened and then, wow, pops up the Arab Spring. They weren't Syrians. Are you kidding me? Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Turkey are behind that. You don't find it amazing that that's where the weapons and the, the extra terrorists and fighters against Assad are coming from? You don't find it amusing that, that people can't connect the dots with Benghazi? It's all to overthrow another legitimate government. 
and ours has already been overthrown, and we're sitting on our butts. Our law enforcement are taking marching orders from the Department of Homeland Security, which pretty much takes marching orders from the globalist elite. The terminology of Homeland Security is a joke. They've targeted the homeland. If you realized how much all of this was interconnected and you realized really truly how much in danger your family, your children, and future generations are, you wouldn't be sitting there laughing. And you surely wouldn't be attacking gun owners and people who are willing to fight for you because you know what? That's what we do. We stand up for you. We stand up for your First Amendment right so you can act like asses and try to take ours. And I'm sorry if that stepped on your toes, but it's a fact. When you try to create free speech zones because you don't like what you have to hear, yet we fight to make sure that you can say what you want because of free speech. Hypocrites. That's what you are. And then when it finally comes back to bite you, and you get targeted by your own government because you didn't fall in line the right way, that's when you whine. Just like the, the Groover films. We all knew this was a lie. Nobody would listen. They thought it was a freaking joke. How many of you know that those ICD codes are actually World Health Organization codes that are interconnected with the UN? How many of you know that? How many of you really researched it instead of parroting that Obamacare is this great thing? How many of you have researched that there are death panels? How many of you have researched that there is implantable RFID chips? And you can say you don't care and you support that and this, that, and the other. All you want. But when it comes knocking on your door, you'll be singing a different tune. And what we the people in a peaceful manner are trying to do those second amendment people that you can't stand we're trying to keep them from knocking on your door as you target ours thank you god bless you and i have hope that i have provoked some sort of thought Get armed, plenty of ammunition, practice, and above all, make sure safety comes first. But it's not just our right, it's our duty. God bless you and good night.